Okay, welcome uh, everybody to our second lecture today on physics of semiconductor devices. So, um, I hope uh, you all had the chance to watch my post lecture video. Um, I will, uh, as I said, uh, as I explained, I will try to use uh, these post lecture videos to uh, make sure we stick to the plan. But also, you know, I will uh, try to use them to go into the details so that you have, you know, uh, a better chances to understand, you know, how things work and so on and so forth. It, it will all depend on, you know, what we do here. The idea is to take the stress out of the lecture. This is very important. So here I want to discuss with you. I don't want to go through lengthy things and so on and so forth. These are things you can do on your own. And that's where the video comes in. Okay, so if, if you've seen in these videos, you know, I go into very much detail. Uh, remember our deal, you know, that I'm expecting you to work at home on your own. Uh, so this is something that you have to do. So I will try to stick to that. You know, I will uh, try not to uh, uh, use, let's say, more than we explained the last time. But uh, I, I definitely expect you to work on your own, as well as do, if time allows you, the pre-reading. I explained this in my announcement, so I, I believe everything is clear. But, you know, uh, feel free to, we can discuss any time if you have any concerns or anything. And, any, uh, and at any time, feel free to come to my office, as I said, okay? So we, if you have anything that, I don't know, you didn't understand, and so on and so forth, you know, obviously use my, uh, um, uh, my availability there. Okay, uh, so uh, today I'm planning to conclude, uh, uh, today's lecture material is about uh, finishing, let's say, the, the this uh, introductory part about circuit analysis. So uh, last, uh, last week was about uh, um, uh, analyzing circuits using uh, um, uh, voltage sources or also current sources in the so-called regime that you are probably most familiar with that we shall call uh, DC, direct current. Okay, so constant voltage, constant current, and so on and so forth. Uh, today we are going to analyze another uh, uh, very important regime that uh, we shall call AC, alternate current. Remember that we are always interested for any system we will deal with, with the steady state response of the system. Okay, I've explained this very well last week and also in the, in the post-lecture video. Um, so, how do we deal with AC? circuits, AC analysis of circuits. So these are also things that I believe you have um, dealt with already. So I'm, I'm going to do, you know, uh, to, to summarize some important results from that, uh, um, <clears throat> from that uh, uh, um, uh, theory, let's say. So the first thing we do is we are talking of alternate current, so this means that the kind of signals we are dealing with are of this type. Cosine functions, sine functions, and so on and so forth. Omega t is the, uh, uh, the part related to the uh, angular uh, uh, frequency of the, uh, of, the, of the signal, and uh, phi is the phase. Of this, uh, of this, uh, of this signal. Uh, so these are things we, you, you, I'm sure you are, uh, you are familiar with. And this is our uh, alternate uh, current signal. V is the amplitude of the signal. And uh, and um, the question is now, okay, we are applying this signal to our circuit. Let us say a resistive circuit. So what we can easily realize is that in the steady state when, remember, all transients have finished, they are over, uh, all signals along my circuit will all have some sort of sinusoidal or cosinusoidal form. 
the phase may be different, but will all be of type, could be all be written in the type cosine omega t plus a phase that may be different. Okay, so um, this is the key behind the formalism we introduce at this point, that is that of exponential notation. Imaginary, sorry, imaginary exponentials. So what we say is that, um, very well, instead of using this thing, I will be using another signal that I call B tilde, just to remind the tilde. I like the tilde in this case because it reminds me AC is generally indicated, uh, for example, uh, voltage sources are indicated with this symbol, an alternate uh, uh, um, voltage source. So uh, uh, we will use the tilde just to remind us. So I will switch to this So V tilde is V, E to the J omega t plus C. Which we can further using, uh, because this is an exponential, we can write it obviously in this way. The imaginary, yes. In, uh, for, it's, uh, for historical reasons, which at this moment I don't know why, uh, uh, in complex uh, mathematical analysis you use I. In electronic circuits they historically use J. It's not, uh, I cannot tell you at this very moment why, but it's what it is. So we'll, because you probably, in, in every book, in every source you will use, you'll probably see J. So let's, let's use J. Okay. But J is the imaginary unit, correct. So J squared is minus one. It's fine. Yeah, as long as you understand, yes. that's fine. So at this point, so this is all fine, and we will define, we will call um, this term here. You see that this term has not n more t. Okay, we've removed through this trick. I've removed t from the important term. You see that this is the important term. This carries the information of amplitude and phase. So I'll call this D tilde without T. Huh? So basically, uh, we, through this trick I'm using, we will explain why this trick is reasonable now. I've written my uh, V tilde T as a constant effectively. It's an imaginary number. Remember, this V time E to the J phi. We will explain now what that is time e to the j omega t. So this is the part that carries the, the, the actual temporal dependence. This, as we explained previously, for my circuit, all, pa all items within my circuit will all have the same temporal dependence. As we explained previously, we said all points in the circuit will all have some sort of cosine, blah, 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 blah. So that's what this term is doing there. All items in my circuit through this new notation will all present this term. It's this term that really carries the particular information for Vt, for example. Amplitude and phase. Now, why is this, what is the, 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 the deal we do here when we do this, uh, uh, we introduce this notation. The deal is rel relies on Euler uh, um, identity, if you like. So e to the j omega t plus phi. So this uh, imaginary exponential can be actually written as cos omega t plus phi plus j. So as you can see, this expo a complex exponential is a complex number of which cos omega t plus phi is exactly that part, isn't it? So the, the idea of analyzing uh, 
circuits where the uh, uh, excitation, let's say, is of co-sinusoidal or sinusoidal form go, uh, uh, is through the use of complex exponential is that I will do the analysis of the circuit using complex exponential and then once I finish my analysis I will reobtain real numbers by simply doing the real part of the complex version, let's say, of my signal. Because this, according to this chain of identities, and according to this uh, uh, um, um, identity, Euler's identity, which tells me that the real part of this exponential is cosine, this is exactly V cosine omega t plus V, which is the, the, the signal we started with. So we start with real signals. To do the analysis, we move to imaginary complex signals because they will help. And then once we reach the conclusion, if we wanted to reobtain the real uh, um, result, if you like, we need only to do the real part of whichever result we've obtained, and this will give us the corresponding uh, um, uh, uh, real result to our problem. So that's the, the idea. Does it make sense to you? Huh? Have you been introduced to complex exponentials, impedance, and stuff like that? Because that's where we are going. Huh? Is it a new term, impedance? No, OK, good. So this is the theory behind that. Okay, that's what we will do now. We will assume that our signals, instead of being cosine and sine, are actually of this form, or, or maybe better this. So we've, re we've separated the time dependence from everything else that carries the important information. So this is, I repeat, this thing here, V tilde without the T, so this is effectively a constant, if you like, depends on uh, the amplitude and the phase. We call this, If you, in, in, in the books, you may find it as phasor. In some books, we will not, I don't like this notation I'm going to write now, but in some books you may find it. The phasor, that is this thing, may also be indicated as V. In the, this means that V is the amplitude of the signal, phi this is the angle, if you like, phi is the phase. Okay, this is an equivalent way of, I don't, I will, I will not be using this notation, I'm just telling you, you will find it in some books. Okay, so what does this all mean now? Okay, so we, we've been talking about complex numbers. Now, when we deal with complex numbers, we tend to represent them on uh, um, uh, uh, a real imaginary plane. So we always um, use <coughs> plane of this type where we plot the real part and the imaginary part. So, this uh, imaginary uh, quantity that I've written here, V is the amplitude, but this thing is cosine plus J sine. So on here, this would represent, so the cosine is the real part. So this is uh, 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 on this axis. The sine is on this axis. So effectively, this is a unit e to the j omega t plus phi, if you do the, <clears throat> the absolute value of this thing, you need to do the square 
Uh, you remember uh, from complex uh, number theory, you remember that if you have a complex number A, that is uh, um, x plus j, y, the absolute value of this number is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Well, if you do that for this, you'll get 1. So this means that this is, a, uh, this is the real component of this quantity. This is the uh, um, uh, imaginary component. So this is actually indicating a vector, a unity vector of length 1, because if you do the absolute value of e to the j omega t plus phi, because this, is, this will be cosine squared, sine squared will be 1, square root of 1 is 1. So the absolute value of this thing is 1. So I could draw here the unity circle. And so this term alone is telling me that V tilde, without the V, of course, with the, I'm, 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 for, for now I'm not looking at the amplitude, which is just a constant, is a vector that is rotating. And its real component is cosine omega t plus phi, is rotating at a, uh, uh, angular speed omega. The real component is cosine, so this point here represents cosine omega t plus phi at any t, and this is the sine of omega t plus phi, this point here. So as this move, you are getting effectively uh, what these two components um, do, are doing. I hope I'm not saying anything that is extraordinary here for you. And um, so this was, this representation uh, uh, contains the de time dependence of this new notation. Okay, this vector is rotating. Through this uh, chain of things and introducing the phase or concept, we've removed the time uh, um, uh, component. So effectively, if I wanted to represent the phase or V tilde, that doesn't contain any more time, this would be now a static vector on this uh, plane of length um, of length v. We've now found out that the absolute value of any uh, e complex exponential, as this one, is always 1. So we have V is the amplitude, and phi is telling me the uh, uh, angle of this vector. So I could actually write it, immediately draw it, something like that. This is phi, and the length is V. So this notation is actually allowing, allowing, allowing me to see on the plane, in a static way, the important bits of my original signal. we will not be uh, dealing again with this kind of plot. It's just good to remember the underlying, uh, um, the underlying uh, um, assumptions and theory and approaches that we'll be doing when we start playing with impedances. That's what is behind. OK? Is there any issue with this? Is it clear? <coughs> huh? Did I say anything that was completely new to you? Okay, that's good. Okay, I'll remove everything. By the way, this board is horrible. I, I will ask if we can change uh, change the lecture theater. Okay, so let's apply now these things to our components that we've learned about: the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor. I'll probably write in red, maybe it's clearer. 
So the resistor. So we we know that if I have a resistor, we know that the relation between there is a current here flowing through, which we shall call I T, and the potential between here and here we call it V T. And so we know from Ohm's law that V T is R. So at this point we say fine, we are not dealing with a very general signal VT or IT, we are dealing with sinusoidal signal in AC steady state. So we can change this from this notation to our new imaginary complex approach. And so we go from VT to V tilde without the T anymore, because we said we've, uh, we've sorted out the time dependence. I will put it now just to show you what happens, but we will then understand that it's not needed to put it anymore. Obviously, you see now that why the, the time dependence is not needed anymore, and so we get a relation between the phasors. Sorry. So we learn obviously the obvious result that in AC analysis now we will call the constant that um, relates voltage to current impedance. Okay we will generally indicate it with Z. So for the resistor, the impedance of the resistor is R. That, that was obvious, probably we, we, we kind of already uh, knew that. But what is interesting now is what happens to C, for example. So um, let us again indicate here there is a current IT. And we have a voltage that we measure in this way, way, Vt. And so for the capacitor, we know that the fundamental equation behind the capacitor is this one here. I think red is better. Is better red than black? What do you think? Is it better? Black is better. Who votes for red? Not many. Black? Man, much more. Okay, okay. Black wins, sorry. Okay, so this is the equation. <clears throat> and uh, so we now do the same trick. I will not write anymore e to the j omega t. We found out that e to the j omega t goes away. Uh, oh no, actually, I have to write it. Sorry. Uh, so this is i tilde i tilde e to the j omega t equal to c. I have to do the, the derivative of v tilde e to the j omega t. v tilde doesn't depend on time. It's only e to the j omega t that depends on time. And so this brings down j omega. And v tilde is a constant. e to the j omega t. So again, I can remove this. I can remove this. And so we obtain I tilde is J omega C. Um, uh, uh, um, I did a mistake here. Nobody corrected me. Uh, no. I did a mistake <laughs> saying that now. <laughs> that's correct. Sorry. I was misled by what I'm doing now. Sorry. So uh, that's correct. So J omega C V tilde. And so finally, we let's swap this around to uh, highlight which is uh, the impedance. And so this is the impedance of the capacitor, 1 over j omega c. If you note, the impedance of the resistor is a real number, while the impedance of the capacitor is a pure imaginary number. Okay. Remember some properties of uh, how we play with complex numbers. 
uh, uh, I could uh, transform this into a number with j at the numerator by multiplying numerator and denominator by j. So I could also write the impedance of the capacitor. Obviously, this is the result we got. I could also write it like this. Okay? By multiplying and dividing by j. And using that, j squared is minus 1. Okay, so this is for the capacitor. And finally, finally, for the um, inductor, so for the inductor, we remember that the equation was V. Uh, equal L di the T. And so we do the same uh, story. And so we get the final result that V tilde is now J omega L I tilde. And so this is now the impedance of the inductor. Oh, now, <clears throat> uh, just a, um, um, so summarizing. So inductor and capacitor have both complex impedance. The resistor is real. In general, what we can say is that the relation between V and I in a general point of a circuit will be generally be this one, where Z is a complex number. Could be real, could be imaginary, could be both. Could have both real and imaginary part. A proper complex number, if you like. So Z could be in generally be written as R plus JX. I'm choosing the letters uh, accordingly because to remind us that the real part of the impedance is the resistance. And the imaginary part is what we call the reactance. If we wanted to uh, uh, reverse this relation and write I equal to uh, uh, something time V, uh, this something is what we call admittance. Which is the admittance is the inverse of the impedance. So remember, this is one, simply 1 over Z. And so the admittance is, uh, could be in general written as, again, is a complex number. So J, G plus JB, for example. We don't choose G uh, uh, by chance as G because this is the conductance, is the inverse of the, uh, what we used to call in the DC regime, resistance. So this is called conductance. While B, is called, I'm at the border of the recording area, I think, uh, is susceptance. Okay, just so you know how to call what. Um, okay. Um, What do these things mean? What means that when it's real, when it's purely complex? What does it mean in terms of the relation between, for example, voltage and current? So when R is real, if we look at, uh, uh, in the, in closely at the phasor uh, relation, uh, I shall probably clear, I will clear the top.
can remove this. I want to leave just the Z C. So we found that V for the resistor is R I tilde. But remember that this is V time E to J phi of the voltage. And this is R time I E to the J phi of the current. So what we, what we can see from here is that we can put things together. So the exponentials obviously can be put together. So we have that. Uh, uh, we can, we can uh, uh, separate this equation into an equation for the amplitudes. And so we, we can effectively write this like that. So this is, this is telling me that um, um, the, the, the amplitude V, uh, no, there is something wrong here. I wouldn't write it like that. Um, I will come to this in a moment. Uh, it's, there is something later that uh, will will tie to that. So I'll, I'll, I'll move on for now. So um, so we found out the impedance. We've defined the impedance of our uh, fundamental elements. So at this point, we can um, go back to our um, circuit analysis stuff and start uh, defining some more uh, general things like let's say that this is my system now there are there is some circuit in here and there is some input which we can call v1 the tilde means that this is the you know under this notation it's an ac circuit okay we are uh, under uh, we are doing the ac analysis of the circuit and there is some output this is V2. So in general, what we can uh, demonstrate is that uh, there will be some relation between this signal and the input, which we can indicate it's a will be a complex function. So as you can see, the way that we have defined things, this H function is the function that provides the relation between V2 and V1. We call this transfer function. Of the system. Because it relates, it, it allows us to transfer input into the output. So this is a complex uh, quantity. <coughs> which means that this quantity also can in general be written as, as any other uh, uh, complex uh, quantity we've come across up until now, like the V tilde or, or I tilde, can be written as the absolute value time a term that contains the information of the phase of this quantity. Generally, just to avoid writing phi of blah, 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 we use the term argument, which probably you've come across. So I will indicate it as argument of h j omega. Argument h j omega is the, the, the term containing the uh, uh, um, phase, <coughs> represents the phase. And uh, if we, so this is by definition what 
uh, uh, our exponential notation means applied to h uh, j omega. But based on the fact that h j omega is this, and based on the fact that v2 tilde is the amplitude time, the phase, and so on and so forth, we could rewrite this as v2 e to the j phi2 over v1 e to the j phi1. And so this means that this is v2 over v1 e j phi2 minus phi1. So from this simple chain of equalities, we realize that, so th this is a, 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 a real quantity, so this has to be equal to this, and this quantity must be equal to that. So in other words, the absolute value of h j omega represents the ratio between the amplitudes of the signals that are input and output to my system. While the, what we called the argument of this complex number is actually the phase difference phi2 minus phi1, so it's the phase of this signal minus this, the phase difference introduced effectively by the system. So the argument of h j omega is phi, phi 2 minus phi 1. So this is the key to remember. The transfer function carries information related to the ratio of the amplitudes of the input-output and the difference in phase between the input and the out output. Now, just to, to remind you, how do we calculate for, our, for any given complex number? How do we find, you know, we, we are representing here our, uh, our uh, uh, complex uh, quantities as, uh, as we said here, the, the, the amplitude, time, the phase. So if I have, we said previously, let's take, a complex number A that is x plus j y. Uh, this is on the imaginary real imaginary real complex uh, plane corresponds to a certain point. This is x, this is y, and so this is the vector that represents A in this complex plane. So we want to write A in this uh, <coughs> this this formalism is also called the Polar. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if this is what you're going to be asking, but uh, with the when you're in those V two exponential over V one exponential. Oh, you I did a mistake here. Yeah. <laughs> well spotted. Wow. Somebody's following me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, this, uh, this thing here, the argument, we, I will define it now, argument of the complex number H, the transfer function. I will define now what argument means, it's the phase. You, uh, I was doing it here actually. So we have in general our complex number here on our plane. We want to write this using this uh, approach of uh, um, the absolute value that is the length, you see V2 is the length of, the, of, the, of, the, of this vector, and this is the indicating the phase. So uh, I want to do something similar here. So let's call this angle phi. I want to find A, the length, which is the absolute value of this, uh, of this quantity, and the phase. So how do you do that? So A, the, 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 the absolute value of A, we said previously, is the square root so that's how you calculate also this quantity. You have h, a, a, h, j omega, which is generally complex. To calculate the absolute value, you need to write it in the real part, imaginary part, and, and take this quantity. To calculate the phase, what you do, you need to use uh, trigonometry. So this is y. So this is a triangle with a 90 degree angle here. So I would say that y 
is um, x tangent phi. So y tangent phi. And so if we can find what we call phi as the arc tan uh, yeah, of y over x. So the, the phase, what we call the argument, okay, we, this is a synonym if you like, okay, argument, the argument of my complex number phi is uh, the arc, tan, arc, arc tangent of y over x. <coughs> so this is general complex number stuff. Now, you will see that when you calculate of a general system, a, a, a linear time invariant system as the systems we will be using, this uh, function hj omega in general is not immediately written as a real number plus a complex number. Generally, maybe it's a, it's a fraction of things. So in that case, uh, I will say this and then we have a break. I believe you understood that all this stuff uh, requires that you remember a little bit of all the complex uh, uh, stuff that you've done, uh, some complex number stuff that you've done some time ago, probably. So if h j omega is, for example, a function of j omega divided by another function of j omega. So we can always represent uh, uh, any function using this formalism, the absolute value, the polar formalism that we've described. So absolute value times the exponential. So I could write this f as the absolute value of f times e j argument of f. Now remember, the argument is the phase, huh? the argument. Divided by g, same story, e to the j argument of g, j omega. Which means, in other words, I can put these exponentials together I'm losing the, the marker. So, we, in many, many occasions, you end up always with something like that, the ratio of two complex numbers. So in this case, uh, something uh, uh, you can immediately do is, because you, all, you want to find the absolute value, for example, in the face of H. So this chain of equalities tells you very well if you want to find the absolute value of h, that's simply the ratio of the absolute value of the numerator divided by the absolute value of the denominator. This will give you the absolute value of h. Regarding the phase of h is the, simply the argument of the numerator minus the argument of the denominator. So this will tell you the argument of h. Okay, just some uh, um, uh, simplifying tips, if you like, uh, that are always useful to remember when we deal with this, uh, with, uh, with complex analysis. Okay, uh, I will uh, use just two more minutes to, just because we are talking about this and uh, I want, it's maybe better to complete this. After this, we will do ex examples. So the transfer function is an extremely important concept because it tells us, as I explained previously, how an input signal is transferred to the output and can be manipulated by the system, can be changed, can be changed through 
we can change the amplitude of the signal, we can change the phase. All done through this function h that depends on the components in the circuit. So uh, it is very important to understand how this function, which will depend from the frequency of the signal, you see that there is clearly a dependence on omega. Remember that which are the components that depend on omega? The capacitor and the inductor. They introduce, uh, uh, through their impedances, uh, dependence on omega. So it is very important to learn to plot uh, this uh, function properly and to uh, um, um, get the feeling of what that function is doing. So this is done through the so-called uh, Bode diagrams. Probably you've come across this. And uh, I will do it probably here. So the Bode diagram <coughs> uh, re, re, um, before defining the Bode diagram, which is effectively the plot of uh, uh, the absolute value of my function, we need to introduce the decibel. Okay? We, we define of a given number, uh, uh, of a given complex number, of, well, of any number. Now we are talking of h, so let's talk about the absolute value of h j omega. So if I have my absolute value of h j omega, how can I transform it in decibel? Or remember that h j, uh, h j omega is by definition a dimensionless, dimensionless number. Okay. So I can transform it into decibel by doing 20 log in base 10 of the absolute value of h, of this absolute value. <clears throat> what this does, what this operation does is that every time, say that uh, this quantity is 1. So if we can make a table, if uh, the absolute value of h and the corresponding db value, decibel. So if the absolute value of h is 1, the, the des corresponding decibel value is 0. If the absolute value of h is 0, 1, so one decade smaller, 10 to the minus 1, this value would be minus 20. Huh? The logarithm of 0, 1 is minus 1, and so this is minus 20. If you take 10 to the minus 2, minus 40. 10 to the minus 3, minus 60 and so on and so forth. Of course, you could go also up. Uh, but in general, we will, uh, we will deal here with uh, systems that don't amplify, uh, systems that are passive here. Because H, generally, will be either 1 or smaller than 1. That means that the amplitude of V2, generally, is either, at best, the same as V1 or smaller. This means my system is passive, will not amplify the signal, the amplitude of the signal. So this is what decibel means, this is simply doing this operation. It allows you to put uh, things nicely on, the, on a logarithmic-like uh, 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 diagram. And so the, 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 the Bode diagram, effectively, I will remove this, looks like So if I ask you plot the Bode diagram of something, you plot. Here is logarithmic in omega. And here is the absolute value of h j omega in dB. You just indicate it. It's enough to indicate it in parentheses. As I said, h in general is a dimensionless number. So uh, we, we indicate the db there. And, uh, and the, 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 um, uh, the units here are, for example, we can indicate here the 0, which effectively corresponds to h equal 1, remember, eh? but in db will be 0. Here is minus 20. Here is minus 40, minus 60, and so on and so forth. And here also, remember, these are log in logarithmic scale. So it's effectively log. And here is 20 log of the quantity. This is for the, for the absolute value. Okay? This is the Bode 
board diagram. We will see some of this later on in the, in the exercise with the application maybe. And then one, another thing we need to plot, it's not finished. We are only plotting here the absolute value of the transfer function. We want to plot also the phase because that's also an important uh, uh, component of the, of, of the transfer function. And so for the phase, So the phase is we use a, a, a similar approach of log omega here in logarithmic scale, but we plot the phase as is. So this will be the argument. Completely destroyed this marker. So this is the argument of h. Remember, this is phase. Okay, so it's degrees, if you like, or radians, if you prefer. Either is the same, so uh, we can have here, I don't know, plus uh, uh, 90 degrees, plus 180, and here minus 90 degrees, minus 180. There is no, there is, generally we use from plus 180 to minus 180, this represents a total of 360 degrees uh, swing. Okay, so in other words, when I'm dealing with the AC circuits, these two graphs contain the entire information of what my system does. Okay, we will see a, a couple of applications uh, after the break. Uh, shall we say five minutes, just because I started a bit later today. Huh? Oh, yeah.